Welcome or welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna do some routine maintenance on this 2022 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon Eco Diesel. This video is not sponsored, but I will have links in the description, all the different stuff that you see in the video today. If you wanna help out the channel, uh, use those links to purchase some of these items. That'd be great. I really appreciate it. These are opinions are all my own. I pay for all these parts with my own money. I'm going to use Doc's filters. And when you do your maintenance, you want to make sure that you're using a high quality filter. There's no problem with Doc's. Never heard a bad word, nothing but good stuff. I got the oil filter from Doc, the air filter from Doc's, the fuel filter from Doc's, and the cabin air filter from Doc's all for less than what I would have paid for a oil filter at the dealer. For what I would have paid for just an oil filter, now I can every five to 7,500 miles, I can change all four of these filters each time I do it. The other thing you need to do is have the proper oil put into the Eco Diesel. I'm gonna use the Pennzoil Platinum Euro. It has to meet the Chrysler MS12991 spec. This is a pure synthetic, so I'm gonna use the, the, the Pennzoil Euro and i got this from amazon if you uh find the video is helpful hit that subscribe button leave me a comment and hit that like button anyways let's get going i'm going to start off with changing the oil so i'll get underneath and i'll take the drain plug out and let the oil start draining out of that before i do anything else when you're getting ready to do an oil change if not for you experienced guys you already know what to do but if you're just trying to get into this on the jeep gladiator here the eco diesel it's a 13 millimeter socket that i'm going to take that plug off with got a uh, pretty large pan nine quarts of oil in here and when we take that plug out it's really going to come out you can't just have a shallow pan you need a big pan like this otherwise you're going to have a a big mess and i can tell you i know that from experience holy cow man oh geez last person to tighten this up was the oil change guy at the jeep dealer when i got my last jeep wave oil change there we go. Here's a tip you guys might find helpful. I always wear these rubber gloves when I'm dealing with oil, chemicals, or, or all the time whenever I'm working on my bicycles and everything. I'll put a pair of gloves on, and then I'll put another layer over them. That way, when the outside glove gets dirty, it makes it a lot easier to put on a new, to get rid of that old glove on the top and then put a new one on like I'm doing right now. They just got dirty with the oil that I was taking out of the oil drain plug. I learned this from working in uh, clean rooms in Silicon Valley from the old guys. And now I'm an old guy and I'm sharing this trick with you guys. And now it'll be easy to just rip this glove off the top, put a new one on when these are dirty. In case I wanna use my hands for something else. This is what the oil filter looks like. It's a cartridge oil filter. And it comes with the cartridge already inside of this plastic housing. This thing's going to get torqued to 25 newton meters. And you need a 27 millimeter or I think an inch and a 16th socket. You have to be really careful. I had one of these come loose. Not a Dox, but a different brand that I got, which I'll never buy again. That got kind of hosed. But I had one of these come loose when I was at a place called Joshua Tree in California. And it screwed up my whole trip. Uh, you can see that in another video. I'll leave a link up here where you can see that. But, but now I'm going to remove the old oil filter. And I'm going to put some rags all around so when I do remove it, any residual oil is going to get caught in those rags. And then we'll talk about putting this new oil filter in when that one's out. On the Jeep Eco Diesel, the oil filter is located on the driver's side of the motor. And this is it right here. Not hard to get at at all. I'll get my 27 millimeter socket right on here and twist that off. I've got a rag positioned down here to catch any residual oil. I'll show you it when I get it out of there. It shouldn't be on there very hard, just 25 newton meters. It says right on top of the oil filter, 25 newton meters. You never want to tighten it any more than that or any less than that. Old oil filter's out. It's actually a pretty good amount of oil left in there. I'm going to clean that up and get my new oil filter in. I got my new Dox oil filter right here. And one thing you'll notice is that there's an O-ring here and an O-ring here. But one thing you want to do, in case you didn't know, you always want to put some fresh oil on any o-ring before you put it in so here's a little fresh oil i don't know the science behind why you do this but leave me a comment all you smart mechanics out there then we're just going to place this down inside and that's it the new oil filters in i'm going to return the oil drain plug into the drain pan and i'm going to torque this to 33 foot pounds now i'm going to add some oil it's got to have that chrysler ms12991 designation and it takes nine quarts i'm going to put in eight quarts but i want to make sure i don't overfill it i can run it a little bit maybe drive it around the block check it and then if i need to add some more oil after that then i can got my eight quarts of fresh oil in holding off on the ninth like i said now it's time to put the docks fuel filter in the fuel filter it's down here on the driver's side and it's right here it's got that nice bash guard on it
Now you can see the fuel filter. And here's a little petcock that you can drain water if your light ever comes on that tells you you have water in your fuel system. Should be able to reach in through this guard and put a hose on here and drain that water out. I've never had that happen. I'm gonna try to collect whatever diesel's inside this filter and it won't make such a big mess when I take the housing off. I'm using an inch and eighth socket. It fits almost perfect. Get it pretty loose and then the rest will just come by hand. Still quite a bit of diesel dripping out of this thing. So you can see how the old filter came out and the end that points up is this end right here. So when you get it up in there, it'll click in. So let me see if I can get this in there, spin it around, push it right up. Now the new filter's in. Now I just have to get rid of this old filter. Oh. There's an O-ring here on the, on the filter housing. We've got a new one that came in our Doc's filter. Put this O-ring on. And just like before, we'll put up some oil on this O-ring. I'm a new O-ring on there. The Doc's O-ring is brown. The new filter's in, the housing started back on, and I don't torque this one. I just keep turning it until basically this petcock is in the right place. Then we'll go through the starting procedure and make sure nothing's leaking. So now the new fuel filter has to be primed because it's empty of fuel now. So I just read in the manual, hit the start button without putting your foot on the brake, let it run for 30 seconds. You do that twice, and then the third time, it should start up. I did the starting procedure for after you change the fuel filter. Let's take a look. I'm running for two or three minutes now. I don't see any leaks coming out of this fuel filter. I think we got a successful fuel filter change. Hey, if you're finding any value in the video, hit that thumbs up button, consider subscribing, and leave me a comment down below. Now I've just got to get the air filter and the cabin filter in. Four screws, one in each corner. And I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket on this. Pop this old filter out. Should have probably changed this a long time ago. Get the new docks air filter out. Meets or exceed OEM. Throw that right in. Perfect fit. Now move on to the cabin filter. So just the cabin air filter left to do. Come here to the passenger side to the glove compartment and I've got my new docks cabin air filters here. They've got airflow arrow on them. See right here. Make sure we get these in the right way. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Push this little tab up here, right behind the glove compartment. If I can do that with one hand, pull that out. And now if we look inside here, we're gonna see a small clip. This is like a door. Pull this out. Here's what it looks like. And right behind that is a cabin air filter. And originally they made them in one piece, then they changed that. It's gonna be ugly. Oh yeah, that was the old one piece design. Airflow arrow wants to be pointing down because they made them two piece now. It's a lot easier to replace. Boom, get the little door back on here. There we go. And now I just have to replace glove compartment. I'm gonna do that with two hands. So that's all there is to it. I got one thing left to do, and that's to get inside and change the oil life expectancy back to 100%. Do that with a dashboard, navigate over to oil life expectancy, and then hit okay in the middle. Now they'll return it to 100%. So we got four filters changed, the oil and oil filter, the fuel filter, the cabin air filter, and the engine air filter, all for a little over hundred bucks. Plus the oil is another hundred or so. And I got that, all this on Amazon. I'm gonna leave links down below in the description. You guys want to support the channel help out um, use my links to buy this stuff the docs filters you can get on amazon i'll leave those links down there um, i appreciate you watching the video it came out great and hit that like button found any value give me a thumbs up think about subscribing and leave me a comment i really want to hear what you guys have to say about what i've done here in the video and if you have any suggestions how things can get done better maybe i'm doing something wrong but let me know in the comments and i will see you on the next one and don't forget on muddy ruts the best is yet to come